Fantasy heroes are and always will be the ultimate role models for people like us. I mean, come on, we grew up on punk rock for crying out loud. Anyway, as much as we love these plagued characters, sometimes the studios take this as an excuse to overpower them to the point where every battle looks like Zeus versus Kratos. Not that I have a problem with any of that though. As a matter of fact, I've even made a list of my top 10 most overpowered Marvel anti-heroes just to prove my point. Okay, time to power up and check out those entries. It's really hard not to include Nicolas Cage in a list celebrating excessive power. I mean, have you even seen him in Deadfall? That guy would have topped this list easily. Anyway, despite this movie's um, premise, we still get to watch Ghost Rider in all his blazing glory. Apart from Nicolas Cage being, well, Nicolas Cage, his character's turbocharged with all kinds of voodoo shit that makes the Enchantress look like a commoner. I mean, he's strong, he's got firepower, and he can heal. But the true highlights of this creepy skulled entity is that, well, he can literally send you to the kind of hell that your ex keeps telling you to go to. Also, you don't really want to mess with a fired up skeleton in a Hayabusa, trust me. Oh, by the way, this is a friend of mine, Tree. I am Groot! Just to be clear, this entry also includes the galaxy's little treasured baby Groot. But yeah, I do want to give a shout out to that OG giant badass who is way too powerful to be looking like the cover photo of Vegans and Us. The dude's got super strength, regeneration, some weird root weapons, and he literally shielded the Guardians of the Galaxy from a massive explosion. This tree alien wastes no time in showing us he's boss, and if you've ever wanted proof of that, just look back at that prison escape fight. Oh, wait, there's this scene when he's just a baby. Still not convinced? Okay, Stormbreaker's handle is Baby Groot's arm. Yeah, the Stormbreaker. Let that one sink in. See? You can see how awesome Vin Diesel can be when he doesn't keep yapping about family. We told you it was this big. Let's see you dance up here. Ah, the foul mouth assassin strikes again. And you know what? I'm in a good mood today, so I'm also throwing in that disgusting 2009 abomination for this one. I'm not gonna lie, he was so overpowered that he made the freaking Wolverine and Sabretooth look like a bunch of TikTok cats. Laser eyes, teleportation, adamantium claws, regeneration, that list just goes on with this dude. He still sucks ass though, I'm not changing my mind on that. But more importantly, the real Wade Wilson gains way too much leeway with his healing powers. Sure, he can't summon lightning or shoot lasers, but he just doesn't die. Believe me, that's as powerful as anyone can get. It kind of helps that he can pull off all those ninja moves too. Also, let's not forget his most treasured power to constantly breaking the fourth wall. I think the only time we saw anything similar to that in the MCU was the post credit scene in Homecoming with Captain America. Patience. I know he doesn't look very lethal, but Yondu's a grade A badass. Although not because of his invincibility or anything, it really takes a special kind of character to be so dependent on one simple weapon to be placed higher than the previous entries on this list. I mean, even Thor had super strength before Ragnarok came out, so he wasn't totally dependent on Mjolnir. Yondu's just a human Gatorade with a digital mohawk without his Yaka arrow. But boy, that arrow can do so much damage that I'm not going to criticize him any further. I wonder what it would have been like if Hawkeye ever got to meet him. It sure would have been awkward, right? But seriously, Yondu has no business being this lethal, and it just goes on to show how ridiculously powerful a character can become with just a couple of extra paragraphs by super ambitious writers. I was actually going to cut him some slack because he sacrificed himself for Star-Lord, but then I remembered Infinity War and I was like, buddy, you probably should have just let him die. What the hell are you? We are Venom. <gasps> This one's exclusively for Tom Hardy's version, because frankly speaking, the 2007 rendition just looked like he wanted to walk the ramp for Victoria's Secret's Fashion Week. Back to the Venom we all know and love though, I know he's shown to be the weaker symbiote in both films, but you have to admit though, his people are pretty freaking strong to begin with. Don't get me wrong, he definitely looks like final boss material, and his abilities are insane, especially if you saw how much damage he could take against Carnage. He's also very agile for a guy his size. He shouldn't be able to move so quickly with that kind of body frame, but hey, it looks pretty freaking cool. It actually makes me kind of happy that he's not a bad guy because that's just one lesser headache for Peter to face in the Spider-Verse. 
Yeah. Hey, can you turn your music down, please? Because I'm having a really hard time. <laughs> Whatever. Sure, man. Yeah, I'll just turn right down. Thank Sorry. you. This one's probably quite predictable. I mean, you could have guessed it by just reading the title. Yet, you know I'm a total Logan fanboy, and there's a good reason for that. The man's just too freaking strong. If Sharp Claws and Regeneration weren't good enough, they went ahead and gave him an adamantium skeleton that only aggravates his anger management skills. I guess Stryker wanted to become the next Frankenstein. Well, we all know how that turned out, don't we? On a more realistic note, though, Logan can cause some serious problems for you if you get on the wrong side of his attitude, and the right side ain't that big. He's rough. He's tough and they'll be coming at you without even coughing a puff. Okay, that rhyme might have been a last moment addition. But honestly speaking, I don't think he would have been this high up on this list had he not survived the Phoenix's wrath, a freaking atomic bomb, and Professor X's seizure. Yeah, find me one mutant who can survive all three. I dare ya. Security. Yes, the sweet, charming god of mischief. Granted, the dapper Tom Hiddleston doesn't come off as the kind of guy who could beat Wolverine, but then again, he's a freaking god for crying out loud. The way he goes about his business is so sleek that it actually makes you wonder if he's even trying to use his powers at full capacity. And with those dance moves, I'm pretty sure he's what you call a smooth criminal. I mean, he could fool anyone more easily than how Mysterio fooled us into thinking he was actually in Civil War. The trickster is such a master of deception that it's actually kind of surprising that Thor didn't pick up on a few of his ways. We also get to see a whole new range of his combat skills in his Disney Plus show, including some from an alternative version like classic Loki and Sylvie. Anyway, you can challenge me on this entry all you want, but just remember this. You will never be. Yep, she couldn't be a spot lower than the top three. Whether it's the adult version that literally killed Professor X and nearly brought on the apocalypse, or the younger version the freaking destroyed apocalypse, Jean Grey is one mutant who's just too powerful to put into words. No, seriously, she keeps showing off her abilities in a way that makes all the other mutants look bad. I mean, I could go on about how ridiculously overpowered she is, but it's kind of like saying the Earth is round. Screw you, you flat earthers, by the way. On top of that, she doesn't even realize the true potential of the Phoenix. It's like that one kid who always tops the class despite not studying for the exam. Man, I hate those guys. But yeah, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with me on this one because you saw X-Men The Last Stand, you saw X-Men Apocalypse, and I hope you didn't see Dark Phoenix. Yeah, that one kind of ruins the whole vibe that she had going on, to be honest. Hey, has anyone ever told you you look like this? No, thanks, Scott. Oh, come on. You're an asshole. Thank you so much. Bro, when we talk about overpowered heroes, we never miss out on the Hulk now, do we? It's kind of like an unspoken rule. The angry green giant takes the definition of power, chews it up, and spits it out like a ballistic missile. He's shown us more than enough to prove that he's truly the angriest man on the planet, and I don't even think Bully Maguire is going to argue with that one. You should have thought of that earlier. Now, Hulk might not be very versatile with his powers, but he does know one thing, and he does it really well. Whether it's Abomination, a Chitari Leviathan, or even Surtur, there's no exception to the smash. I know he was kind of underpowered when he took on Thanos, but there's literally no limit to his strength and we've seen countless examples of the kind of damage he can inflict. I do have to admit though, it was a really difficult decision to put him second and not first. Smash. Puny God. But I don't need you to tell me who. There could only be one red-haired telekinetic psycho on top, and Wonder Maximoff takes the crown on this one. Sorry, Gene. It's really surprising to see how powerful the creators made her out to be after Age of Ultron. Sure, she had her mind control powers and shit, we never doubted that, but how the hell did she get so strong? 
she could make Thanos piss his pants. I mean, if a dead lover was all it took, then shouldn't Rose be like the ultimate goddess of the universe? Hmm, I guess it isn't true love if there's enough space for two. Also, with one division, we get to see Scarlet Witch flexing some serious muscle. She literally created a whole ass civilization and controlled it while also living in it. I don't even think I understand what the sentence means. None of us were prepared to see the kind of power she could wield, and I've got to say, she does pull it off with some sass. But yeah, Wanda's one badass who's just too powerful to even criticize. And there you go, those are my top 10 most overpowered Marvel anti-heroes. I know I've missed out a few entries, but who knows, maybe I'll do another volume on this one. If you want more top 10 content, then go ahead and like, share and subscribe to keep yourself updated, and click on the link in the description below for exclusive Patreon access. Okay, till next time.